Doing solo runs is always an interesting way to spice up any Fire Emblem run. This is why in today's video, I attempt to beat Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones using only Erica. The rules are simple, no exploits, no grinding, no use of the supply convoys to grab extra potions, only pure strategy. Is it doable? Well, you'll have to watch to find out, I guess. So as the prologue and chapter one unfolds ahead of us, I'll be breaking down the rules a little bit more and give you guys a little bit of extra context so you understand how we're going to go about this one. So first off, the supply convoy and potions rule. So as previously stated, I will not be allowed to use a supply convoy to grab extra vulnerabilities or elixirs. The only way in which I can use the supply convoy is to grab extra weapons or extra items that are not healing, such as stat boosting items and keys. So per map, I allow myself a single healing item to complete the map other than any that are obtainable on the map directly. So for example, if one's available through a chest or if one drops from an enemy or if one's available through trading with a, with a reinforcement unit, for example. The reason behind this rule is simple enough. I did a previous run where I allowed myself healing items and it was extremely easy. There was really no challenge, it, spamming elixir was too simple, so it just became quite like a walk in the park and I didn't think it was interesting to see no real challenge to these types of runs. And you may wonder why I don't extend this rule to the supply convoy entirely, that is because in Sacred Stones there are a lot of maps where the victory condition is to route the enemy or maps where there's heavy reinforcements which would make certain maps just pretty much impossible by having the limited inventory space quick aside as you might be seeing this is all recorded in three times speed to save a little bit of time on my end so if you're seeing everything speed up that's just normal it's everything's in three times speed to make just things a little bit easier for me and i guess for you to watch so you may wonder why i pick sacred stones and why erica well the answer is simple sacred stones itself is one of the easiest fire emblem games of all time so it's always very fun to try and make it a little bit more challenging to me also sacred stone was my first fire emblem game ever and for the longest time the only game boy advanced game i owned that means that i've played this game through and through at least a hundred times at this point. So I thought it'd be a good starting point for these kinds of solo run videos. And if you guys want to see more of these, let me know in the comments. You know, tell me what characters you want and maybe any other Fire Emblem games you want. And I'll try to find a way to make it happen. All right, now that that's out of the way, I just want to show you guys a little bit what I'm doing here. So you'll see me trade Fran's Iron Sword to Erica right away. And the reason behind this is because later on in the run, we're going to need a lot of the special weapons, such as the rapier. One of the goals you want to do here early on is possible is to get that sword to Erica as quickly as possible so she can save some rapier uses. And you'll also see me kind of maneuver Seth and any other reinforcement out of the way as much as possible to avoid them getting hit because, you know, we want to stay in the spirit of the rules and make sure this is a solo run where Erica does everything herself. All right, now that all that good stuff is out of the way, we can get into the more analytical portion of this video and break down how exactly are we going to do this. The first thing to look at is Erica's stats and her growth potential. So that's the one advantage Erica sports. She's one of those characters that starts at level one, which means she has insane potential going forward. But she's nothing to write home to your mom about. She's a pretty standard Lord with high skill, high speed, decent luck. But on the other hand, you have low HP, strength and defense, which at times can come in handy. Her eight skill and nine speed are really gonna be the standout here. Erica can get to 20 speed and 20 skill very easily, which is the maximum in pre-promoted because she starts off about halfway there already. Her five constitution though, is gonna be one of the lowest in the game, which will negatively affect her when yielding certain heavier weapons, which you might need to use later on. Where things start to get interesting though, is when you can look at her growth rates. So for those who aren't extremely familiar with Fire Emblem, let me just break down growth rates quickly and simply. So basically every time you level up, each of your stats have a preset percentage to rise up by one point. Each percentage is unique to each stat line and where you have a higher percentage is generally a reflection of what type of character you have. But because of the random nature of percentage based leveling up, sometimes odd things can happen and nothing is really assured at the end of the day. Here, as you can see, we can expect Erica's skill, speed and luck to be her big upside. Erica outside of Murr sports the highest skill growth in the game. So we can look forward to a lot of crits, a lot of dodges in our strategy. Erica is not gonna be face tanking anything anytime soon with that defense growth rate. The rest of her stats will generally just be a little middling. 
for those who aren't really familiar or you know just more casual fans you might think that that 70 percent growth rate is very high in hp but it's among the middle of the pack hp generally just has a higher growth rate because they kind of want your characters to more often than not get gain hp level ups so seeing those growth rates indicates really the way we're going to be looking at this forward we'll have to play more to the map than maybe with other units where we'll have to think more about terrain such as forests forts or pillars or any way to get more avoid and more defense we won't power our way through any maps we'll have to just play the map strategically and have erica be a dodging machine and maybe often a time hope for a little bit of luck with a lot of crits going our way crossing our fingers on that one so so far i haven't been really talking about the early game you've just been seeing it run in the background but that's because erica will generally be just running through it as you can see right now just kind of like taking care of a lot of the axe units such as these bandits which she has a very easy time with doing the reason i want to highlight chapter three though is because you'll see me try to beat those two bandits at the start that drop a door key and a chess key the reason behind this simple enough later down the line there are a few maps where you don't get key drops but you need keys you can't use thieves to open the chest with their lock picks so in this case i will try to get as many keys as possible and chapter three is a great place to do that to just stack at least two keys for later on down the line also you may wonder why i keep battle animations on well i know it's quicker if i take them off but i feel it just adds a little to the suspense and makes just this whole video look a little bit better because it's so easy to just have you know the battle animations off and you know you don't really see the stats there's a little bit less suspense a little bit less build up so i like to keep them on because they look nice so we finally get to chapter four which is of note somewhat because you finally get access to battle preparations where you'll have the armory which will be super useful in this run because you will need a ton of iron swords and that's because of maps like these ones which are route maps which are usually maps with the monster units which can be very long and can take a, quite a little bit of time because you have to clear them all out and some of these units have a lot of hp and just route maps in this game are going to be a little tedious and will require you to stack up on iron swords a lot especially because of the one of the highest durability therefore they're gonna be really useful in these types of maps to clear out vast amounts of monsters very quickly all right we finally get to our first real point of interest which is chapter five the reason this chapter is interesting is because of the houses which you must save first and foremost there's three houses you're going to want to save on this run and the, the reason behind that is because our erica on this run does not max out naturally her skill we get very unlucky as you can see right now on the screen we are one point below on luck which is unfortunate but it can be rectified on this map because on the third house from the top there is a secret book available which we will want to get the other two houses you want to save are the one on the middle there which has the armor slayer and the other one is the one closest to where you spawn where you have the dragon shield because erica's defense isn't really great this is quite easy to do it's not complicated but it does require a little bit of strategizing so as you can see i install erica in the forest here to dodge out attacks uh, and kill out as many units as possible and i move natasha out of the way because you have to force deploy her but you don't have to use her so i move her back a little bit so that the units go attack erica in the first place and not natasha because if they are closer to natasha they will go for natasha first so you want erica in the way the other thing we want with this map that is very interesting is joshua we don't want joshua because we can use him we want joshua for his weapon the killing edge so Joshua's Killing Edge is one of those weapons that will come in handy later. As I was saying earlier, you need some special items early later on in the run, especially in the mid game to make certain maps more consistent. The Armor Slayer will also be one of those weapons. So this map is about really just placing your units correctly to A, clear out all the bandits reinforcement ahead of time. There is one saving grace out of the bandits. They will be focusing Erika or attacking before destroying houses. So they will be easy to trick. And Joshua, as if some of you guys don't know, Joshua never attacks Natasha. So if you can clear out as many enemy units as possible, you'll be easily able to, to recruit Joshua to your team by talking 
talking to him and Natasha if everyone around him, around him is cleared out and that's quite easy to do as you know there, there's easy paths for Erica to stand on and take on those soldiers so this is a moment you'll see on the screen where I was wondering is it gonna work or am I gonna have to reset I was I was thinking to myself am I gonna have to reset and no the answer is no the bandits come and attack me directly and I get level 18 as you can see 17 skills I need that secret book in that house it's one of the rare times my Erica doesn't get full skill naturally but it can be act rectified quite easily as I said earlier with that house all right, so we'll skip ahead a little bit. We were going to make our way to that house to grab that secret book and also kill that axe warrior to allow uh, Natasha to talk to Joshua here. It, it, he's down. Easy kill. Easy life. That village is destroyed. That's no problem. It's a, it's a village with a torch in it. You could say that Fog of War maps was like two in the game and they're not that difficult so i'm kind of avoiding them generally uh we're gonna put natasha here but we'll have to bring her back a little bit because the bandits will be a problem but they will be heading for the left side house i was kind of scared here because i was like oh no am i gonna be able to stop them and of course uh we do stop them quite easily here we just set up on the side of the shop and the bandit will always focus down erica but we need to move back natasha to keep her safe and not get her killed by any of those bandits and now that we've recruited joshua we make the rounds and as you can see now my erica is level as enough skill to maybe max it out after a few more level ups we're gonna grab here the armor slayer from this old man old ball man and then from tetis down here we're gonna grab our beautiful dragon shield which will be useful to get that extra little bit of defense which erica will need and then clearing out the map is easy peasy you take down those two soldiers here you kill them you know they'll come attack you they won't be that hard we get a sweet little level up over here here we go it's a luck level god dang it erica please god dang it with those level ups we're gonna clear out this man sar here and it's going to be as easy as one, two, three, two hits of the armor slayer. The map is done and we're moving on. Now we get to the infamous chapter 5X on Broken Heart, which honestly we won't spend too much time on. You don't have Erica here, so it doesn't matter. All you want to do is trade Orson Silver Sword to any of their other units so that they keep it once he eventually betrays you. Spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, and then you want to just take on those two keys from the mage and the fighter in that chess room. Uh, for again same purpose as we were talking in chapter three for later on down the line all right so now we're at chapter six we're gonna kind of like let it play in the background as i talk to you guys about our level 20 erica because that's the level we hit it on and there's a few things i want to look into with you guys the map is very easy you stand on that fort you kill a bunch of people you wait you wait it out kill a bunch of people wait it out and then eventually when you have an opening you move to the boss kill him and move on so what you can see right now on the screen is erica's current stat at max level 20 and right beside here coming up what you're gonna see is what her averages should be so as you can see in terms of hp we are doing a little bit above average which is nice yay in terms of skill and speed we're on the average we're, we're doing good we're a bit above average on skill but that's because of the secret book in strength we're technically under the average a little bit but by not that much you know we could have hoped for 12 in terms of strength that would have been nice we didn't get it we got the 11 ish which is going to be you know at points a little tough for us to handle for certain characters to fight and our luck is doing above average which is actually very good for dodging especially later on down the line and our defense is considering we use a dragon shield kind of poor we should have been at 8.7 and naturally or 8 or 9 naturally we were technically at 7 because we used the dragon shield which gave us plus 2 in defense and right after that our resistance is much above average our resistance is doing good so this is the Erica we're going to be dealing with until like chapter 17 when she finally gets her promotion so we could say that we have technically looking at everything and we have a very average erica we don't have someone that's performing above average or above expectations we have a character here that is very much on the average which is going to give us a very good baseline to see if this is doable without using too much luck so moving on to chapter seven is going to be a breeze i'm not even going to talk about it that much it's going to be one of those chapters you can kind of just zoom all the way to the end kill the boss seize the castle and move on but it is going to be an indicator of maybe the last time we can do something like this. All right, so if we're finally at chapter eight, it's a trap. And this one's gonna be one of those that's gonna finally pose a challenge. And not because it's extremely hard, but because you'll start seeing that those Lance units, uh, those soldiers kind of start hitting hard on us. It's like seven, 
10 if it hits it's going to be a kind of a precursor to much of the problems we're going to be running into the mid game really uh but really what you can want to do is move erica to the left side of the of the map because as you can see ephraim just showed up with his friends and you don't want him to get involved and you also cannot die because if he dies we are screwed we have to restart over again i will place her down here with the iron blade in kind of hopes that you know we can kind of kill these units fast enough but 11 damage oh that's bad and that's a game over so you can kind of see where the problem lies here and where we're gonna have issues with this map really but once you make it past the night or survive the night i would recommend maybe equipping your armor slayer there but you do want to keep as many uses of it as possible so i equip a steel blade he's gonna come towards you and also will the soldier right up here but really it's time to move forward and kyle to the other side and kind of transition over making them dodge everything or almost all the attacks to move them to where you started so this knight's gonna come attack we get lucky here with a crit very nice uh, this guy's gonna be a kill but see 10 damage 43 percent chance to hit we're starting to get in places where we can get hit easily by stuff and that's why you want to move because cavaliers are going to show up here i use my last vulnerary that i bring on the map but fortunately we do have the reinforcements so kyle and ford have a few potions to help us out the archer is going to come for us over over here for sure but there's where we're going to use the map and it's going to be on that pillar over here and you'll see where erica struggles on these maps is not only the lance characters but also the lack of terrain that gives her advantage which is you know a big part of the strategy so so any sort of map where you have to deal with uh castles you will have less of an advantage because there is less terrain naturally put there to help you out so you have to play around these pillars extremely well which we'll do here by clearing out all these people around us and when that is done you'll just simply move erica all the way up to the left because there's a few chests you're going to want to pick up so here you want to bait in the the shaman and the archer and the knight but there's one chest on the left side you're going to want to pick up which is the left side chest on both of them which is going to have a silver sword which it's not necessary to pick up but i like to pick it up to have more options down the line later in case i need to rely a little bit more on my stronger weapons and the iron sword doesn't cut quite cut it and then on the right side where there's all the knights which you can't see right now on the screen but on the right side there's a bunch of knights uh, which we'll get to later there is a angelic robe which is actually gonna be really nice to have that extra hp on erica but really from now on it's gonna be quite easy to take care of things there will be reinforcement coming once you break through that breakable wall but they're easy to dispatch especially with the extra potions you have on the map through having those reinforcements so those help out a lot if you try to do this without using potions from your reinforcements this map becomes extremely hard because you will get hit by a lot of the knights which they they hit hard they hit extremely hard and 40 percent chance might feel like it's a it's a given but it's not a given chat it's not a given 40 percent chance will hit you you more than you think uh i try to do it and i got extremely frustrated but clearing out the throne room isn't that hard it's quite an easy peasy thing to do i just set up here with the uh rapier and enemy face so i don't get hit i will heal with a potion here uh beforehand but we do have you know we equip the, the rapier because we want to increase our avoid he'll try to hit us we will dodge we won't unfortunately get no crits and we'll give him the one two punch combo we do get hit but we finish it off luckily we didn't get that general passive happen and we seize so here we get to chapter nine which is after the route split and it's the map where you might have been telling yourself, Kratos, what are you talking about? You can get a second rapier here. You would have been fine using more of the other rapier. You've gotten a second one. Well, no, you can't because you can't traverse water with only Erica. And these bandits will focus down villages before trying to murder you. So we unfortunately have to lose out on that rapier. It was right on the other side because we don't want to use Tana. We don't want her to attack. We don't want her to die. We don't want, well, we don't care if she dies, but we don't want her to do damage. We don't want to use her for anything. It has to be Erica only. So for the spirit of the rules, you can't really get any of the villages, which kind of sucks because I the rapier would have been nice. The extra rapier would have been so great. This is why we must save up on our items. You'll get swarm. Just wait out in the forest. Be very smart about your movement. You'll actually get an extra killing edge on this map by killing the Myrmidon. That's a little later down in the map but other than that it's a very easy map you move through the forest a little bit the couple of forces you have and yeah you clear out this map and move on to chapter 10. so this is another map where you'll kind of breeze through and it's one of those maps with green units which unfortunately you can't do anything about they kind of just there they're going to kill some things 
but they're not really moving away out of their way that much. It's Ines, uh, Tethys, and Garrick, which in a way you want them to stay alive, especially Tethys, because she has a goddess icon, and getting that extra luck is very nice. So this is the only challenge this map poses, is you won't really want to go near them, because the moment you reach a certain threshold, it will trigger Marissa and her unit to come up. And you might say to yourself, hey, you can recruit Marissa, get that Shamshir, and get an extra special weapon that can help you out with a lot of crit. Well, you don't really want to do that, because the moment you recruit Marissa, there's a ton of reinforcement coming up and it makes the map like at least 10 times harder so i will avoid doing that very heavily and just head right to pablo just try to avoid the attack head right to pablo kill the mercenary in the city and get his lance reaver which is a very nice weapon to have but honestly this map shouldn't be hard the 90 percent of the time your green units will stay alive and won't be doing much but there's a chance that one of them dies Tethys usually dies for me. Sometimes Ines, but most of the time Tethys. Chapter 11 is one of those pesky fog of war maps, but again, nothing that crazy. Erica is still doing good at that point in the game. Dolza will maybe survive, but like Larakel is gonna die. There's no way to save her. Don't even try. Also, the chests on the map don't matter. There's nothing really important in them except maybe a secret book. If you haven't had all your skill yet or if you missed it out on the first map, you can get a secret book in a chest on the right hand side. But other than that, you'll want to not waste any keys on any of those chests. I usually take the left path here. There's two paths you can go. You can go through the castle or from the outside, but I like to go from the outside because the moment you approach the big gate at the bottom through the castle, the enemies will open it and swarm you. And there is a lot of gargoyles or flances there which are going to be your only worry on this map to dodge them. But if you take the bottom path, you can fight them by standing in the forest and that makes the fights extremely easier. So just move slowly through the fog of war. Don't take any useless risk and just kind of kill everybody. It's not a hard, you know, Erica does a great job here. Erica does pretty good here. Okay, so excuse my language, but chapter 12 fucking blows. So this is one of the map that caused me real issues on my in one of my first runs that I tried because I did try a couple of runs beforehand. The first one being the one where I used the convoy, which really, as I said beforehand, I had to reset. And another one I tried, but my Erica was so garbage that I had to reset because like there's a map beyond this point that was impossible, but I'll talk about it a little later. So, um, Saleh will die you know you just let him die and equip everything in the battle prep section and let him die when the reinforcement come come along but the challenge of this map really lies in the gargoyle units you might be tempted to use your lance reaver here to make short work of them but don't they might be hard to take out with your iron or steel swords but you need that lance reaver for later down the line trust me there are maps where it's way more useful than on this map you can make do by standing on the forest and dodging your little hard out it does require a little bit of luck this is one of those maps that i couldn't quite get as consistent in terms of not having need of luck but you will need a few dodges the the early part is easy you stand on the forest at the start and you know wait for all the spiders to come in you'll easily kill them and then you just walk slowly through and bring in one gargoyle at a time and then you will stand on the forest in the mountain pass and let all the gargoyles swarm, swarm you murder them and move on with your life the next thing you want to be careful about is to pick up ewan so when you're in the villages you want to pick up ewan because you're going to want to trade with him not just the vulnerary you know it's nice to have but not just that but most importantly the energy ring his energy ring will give you two plus strength and that will be vital for erica to have but yeah where that's where the challenges lies it's surviving those dang gargoyles which will swarm you with their freaking glances and they will hit and they hit hard and erica doesn't hit that hard so the gargoyles defense will show up very much here as you can see on screen they can kind of take a few hits back to back to back so you have to be quite patient and you'll beat them eventually i feel like i shouldn't even mention chapter 13 i feel like it's it's it does a disservice to the run with mentioning chapter 13 because big joke you just stand on the castle and you wait with an iron sword like it sounds dumb but this 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 this, this map is dumb it's a survive 11 turn map it's super easy to do you just stand on the fort and it provides no challenge you'll just run through the map and you can call it a day you know that's 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 chapter 13 for you but unfortunately it's the last map that's going to be easy it's the last easy map for a while so this is where we enter the real mid game this next one chapter 14 this is the map I mentioned earlier that made me reset my previous run. My Erica just did not have the luck to pass that one. 
she was just not dodging enough. So this is where we'll start using those unique items we've been saving up all throughout the run. So the first thing you'll see me do is head down there at the bottom of the map where I place myself third square to the left. Uh, the reason I do that is because as you can see some cavaliers spawn, but if you end up placing yourself down that bottom, that bottom square, you'll be able to stop them from spawning. So one of them will spawn, but not the other one. And then the other one, if you don't kill him, will stop the next one from spawning. So it's a, I don't know, it's a weird bug maybe, but it just kind of allows you to fight two cavaliers instead of six. So, you know, that just makes the map a little bit more consistent because if you allow the cavaliers to get you from the rear, it's going to suck big time. The next thing I do is I'll kill the two soldiers in front of each door to grab their door keys that they'll drop. But I won't open the doors ahead of them. I'll keep my door keys and I'll go open the right hand side door. This map has three ways to approach how to get to the throne room, either the left room, the middle room, or the right room. I picked the right room because it's the one that's going to give you the least amount of forced encounters or attack towards you. We get extremely lucky there with the sword reaver not hitting us. If you take the bottom room where there will be chest with an energy ring in it, which you're going to want to go back to. Well, if you take that path, you will spawn in a few night reinforcements, which you want to avoid fighting. And if you approach the throne room from the left side, there's a little entrance where Renok runs away later, um, where that will allow a bunch of shaman to spawn in. And you don't want the shaman to spot in because you know they're easy to avoid but if they hate you it's like health you lose for nothing okay so the real challenge will begin now when we open this door the two archers will attack us they have a pretty good chance of hitting us we get lucky here and we dodge both of them we want to take them out as quickly as possible and luckily we can do that with our iron sword so one goes down and hopefully we can dodge the second one we get hit there that's unfortunate but it's all right uh we'll be able to take him out with the steel sword where it's going to start getting spicy is here with the knights you're going to want to stand on those pillars it's one of those maps where you at least you have a a couple of pillars here and there i do equip either the lance reaver or the armor slayer it's the lance reaver i pick up i think it's a little lighter i don't know i forget to equip it and then i'm like oh well i guess i'll take out this guy with the steel sword uh or the steel blade yeah it's not the best choice but at least i'm dodging a lot 30 percent chance to hit i'm gonna enemy phase here just allow myself a little bit more leeway why do i go for the iron sword there i don't know it's all good uh, i think i can take out one lance reaver right here right now but i take the steel sword okay i'm taking a bunch of risk here i think i'm trying to save still some uses of the of that lance reaver i think that here i'm going to just try to take this guy out with the lance reaver straight out you know make my life a little bit less complicated but as you can see in the room right beside there are a lot of knights so i think that's what was my my thought process was like i need those usage as much as possible and here i'm just going to take him out with whatever works you're going to want to bring in the knights before you start baiting in the sniper because the knights will start walking towards you once you reach a certain threshold i think it's the third line of pillar whilst the sniper will only aggro if you get in his range of attack so you know you can easily stand on this pillar let them swarm you real quick equip the lance reaver and as you'll see you'll make short work of them and in my previous run i did not have a lance reaver anymore because i had used it on the gargoyle and these three knights were a problem let me tell you all right the sniper is going to come attack us we have a pretty good dodge on but the problem is when we step off he's going to have a easier chance to hit us so we're going to pick up a killing edge here because we still have those killing edges we haven't used them yet and hope for a crit do we ah, we missed the crit okay he's going to attack us Ooh, 50 oh Okay, that was pretty good. And let's get the kill right away. Let's stop dilly-dallying about. Finish him off. All right, that sniper is good. So moving on to the throne room. This is not hard at all. The axe users can barely hit you. And the light mages it will not even do damage to you. You have good enough resistance at this point that you will survive those light attacks because their power is not strong enough. I think it's my Erica only but you know if you get a good roll on the on the res for erica you'll be fine uh, but you know maybe you'll do one or two damage maybe three you know they're not very scary but you know still take them out because they could be annoying and now moving on to carlisle as you'll see here oh he has a chance three percent chance to crit us there's a lot of chances that doesn't hit but in my previous attempt because my luck was so low is chances to crit were more around 10 which made him crit me at least twice which i wasn't really happy about here you see me just check out a bunch of weapons see what's better you can see i don't have a high crit chance even with the silver sword i'm gonna pull out the rapier too just test out the silver sword the rapier the killing edge i have an 11 percent crit chance here with that and or else you know i have a big chance of missing at the 50 percent range 68 percent to hit with the rapier but yeah here i go over the attack with the rapier and let's hope i hit i do hit no crit he hits me back that's kind of bad we don't do a lot of damage we do dodge a second attempt 
get get him to hit, hit back we really want that crit this time we'll enemy phase uh dodge again we get a lucky crit okay this is maybe our chance enemy phase again cross your fingers another dodge oh my god erica standing on her head chat chat standing on her head and we can kill the silver sword do we take the chance do we take the chance let's let's take the chance let's make it happen let's go let's go let's go carlisle freaking dies so yeah carlisle is one of those rare bosses that actually provides a challenge and this map as you saw doesn't seem so hard so far uh we get lucky enough on that end and because we get lucky enough on that end i will track back here i will use the throne to heal myself because i don't have any elixirs left but i will track back to the bottom room where there's a lots of shaman and lots of mages and one knight to go get the extra energy ring because the extra strength is always useful i really want to make sure call out was dead and i had the throne room before i went to the energy ring spot because he has such an easy chance to hit you compared to a lot of other characters we did get a really good run here on this erica but it was one of those attempts i had a struggle with all right so moving on to chapter 15 it's one of those chapter i was anticipating in the run i knew it was going to be one of the probable roadblocks because of a thing that happens on turn two ephraim's reinforcements show up on turn two and there's no real way to get erica to them quickly enough you know they'll just show up and then you're kind of like in the middle of the of the desert and things get a little weird so it's one of those that you can approach from multiple angles but you have to be very careful about what you do so first things first i place erica on that fort in the middle of the desert but the second thing i have to think about is how to keep ephraim alive and how to make sure all these guys at the bottom don't kill anybody or don't hurt anybody so the first thing i do is i trade off all the tomes off of noel and i give them to do so and i give all the weapons to noel that is because no will not be able to attack we'll have to sacrifice no unfortunately rest in peace no no i'm kidding no one likes you and then the next thing i'll do is i'll rescue ephraim with dusel and i'll i will place dusel on the castle at the bottom that way dusel can't hit anybody ephraim can't die and give us a game over the one thing i have a problem with it with this strategy is that it feels a little cheap because all the enemies will just simply swarm dusel and then they'll break their weapons on him there's only like probably four or five enemies that will be doing that because once they don't have any more weapon usage they just won't move but i didn't like that part too much and i understand if you guys think it's against the spirit of the run but there's no real other way to approach this unless there's something i didn't see and if you you, you saw something let me know in the comments but yeah it's one of those where i'm not exactly happy with how to handle it but i don't feel like there's another way to handle it so i kept it in that way and do so will just be swarmed he won't attack back he won't fight so i i guess i count it as erica soloing but you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place with that strategy. And there's no way to catch up Erica on the other side because A, you'll get swarmed by all these Pegasus units and B, the desert will slow you down extremely. And then very quickly, you'll get Cavalier reinforcement from where Ephraim spawned in. So there's a very real chance you'll have to reset maybe once or twice because there's a lot of Alliance units with the Wyverns, with the Pegasus, with the Cavaliers, a lot of units that have an, a very easy matchup against Erica. So there's a lot of chances you'll reset. I do use my Lance Reaver a little bit and there is is a worm slayer you can pick up on the map on the left hand bone side uh, which you're gonna want to pick up and there's also another item that is a swift soul that you can pick up on the fort which erica stands on right now so in this area you should pick up the swift soul try to get him getting that extra two movement is extremely useful and i also go to the right side of the map to pick up the medis tome the reason behind this is that it gives you a 5% increase in all your stats, and that can be useful once Erica gets her promote. You can get a little bit more growth on her and make her just that little bit more deadly. Okay, so once you've picked up everything in the desert, you're going to want to move Erica down to one of the forts where Dusel is. So like kind of like on the same plane as him near all these Cavalier units. You'll be able to do that with the Swift Soul. It's going to allow you a lot more movement. You stand on one of the fort, and then you're going to let all the new people swarm in towards you instead of Dusel. So that's going to be your other survival tactic. You know, move from fort to fort as much as possible. Take down all those guys. But as you can see, 
if they hit you they hit you like kind of a lot you know you do have the hp from that angelic robe you picked up earlier in the run you do have a lot of hp from you know just general growth but some of them can hurt we get a lucky crit on the paladin here the eclipse is never going to be really a problem but you can see what happens uh you just have to kind of slowly chip through this entire army and then once you're done with that it should be pretty easy so you have two points of contention you have the first swarm on the castle in the desert then i go through the desert pick up everything then i go to that second fort down there and then i deal with that swarm of enemy and then we can move on to the bosses all right so in my opinion valtar should not be too bad after we take out this monk that doesn't have a lot of chances against us but can still hit us for nine damage we're gonna move in towards him we have the wyvern slayer we also have the lance reaver i think we're gonna go with the lance reaver here because he still has a good chance to hit us our lance reaver might only still have three uses but i think it's gonna do a good enough job yeah 26 like chance to hit 11 chance to crit i think that's the way to go if he does hit us it can be kind of bad so we just want to wait it out a little bit all right valtar come at me bro come okay we do dodge out we don't get the crit we want but that's fine he is standing on the fort so he will heal which is not great and i realized that at that moment and he hits me with a 21 okay i will vulnerary here i picked up a vulnerary from doozle will enemy phase again you know, we should be fine here. We do dodge. Okay, that's very nice. Very, very nice. And now we only can finish him off the Wyvern. Ooh, so close. So close. So close with the Wyvern sl Worm Slayer. Uh, we'll enemy phase again. Take it carefully. Uh, take one step at a time. He's going to heal, but two hits should do it. So you may be wondering what happened here. I was also wondering what happened there, as you saw by me pausing. So the Whatever Knights have an ability called Pierce, which pretty much just ignores your defense. And I had forgotten about it. I had fully forgotten about Pierce. So Valtar just skewered me and killed me, even though I had more HP than what his initial attack was because he ignored my defense right there. And I had completely forgotten about it. My hubris got the better of me. And I, I got caught. I got caught. But we'll make it back with ease. This time, Valtar. Oh, don't, don't pierce me, man. Don't pierce me. Do not pierce me, buddy. All right, let's see what he does. We do dodge. We hit again. All right, same thing as before. We will enemy phase again. Let him heal on the fort. Doesn't matter. Let's, we dodge again. We hit again. All right, all right. And we do enemy phase. We're taking it very carefully, which is mitigating a lot of our damage. We should just maybe go in for the hit. But if he does hit us twice, it's kind of bad. We're, we're fine here. We will go for the Worm Slayer out of the way, even though one has a much higher crit chance. Uh, we will enemy phase here. Ed, go for the Worm Slayer attack. And hope, and it's okay. We are full HP. So even if he pierces us, we are technically fine. We're going to be surviving with maybe like one or two HP because I believe our defense is like at eight at this point. So we'll survive with one HP literally. So, all right, Valtar, come in. Oh, we do dodge. Oh, he dodges us back. Oh, that's bad. Enemy phase again. He heals all the way back up and he hits us. Oh, this is bad. This is bad, chat. This is bad. But we do have the elixir. We do have the elixir. We end the turn. Oh, he hits us again. We get hit again. He's in killing range here. Do we take the chance? Do we enemy, enemy phase? Here, I'll test out the silver sword just to check. It would kill, but it wouldn't have a higher chance to hit. We elixir again. Use another one. And our turn. And he pierces. Oh my god. But we survived. Oh lord, that was a close call. Luckily, we did. Uh, luckily, we did use the the elixir there. All right, here what we'll do is we'll move on to Kalik. He shouldn't be too much of a problem if you ask me. You know, he can hurt, but he has only axes, which is very lucky for us. The one problem I have is I make my way to him with 21 HP. So if he does hit us, as you can see, he's going to kill us. He doesn't have a lot of chances of hitting us, but it can happen. So you'll see me use my elixir right here. Enemy phase with my iron sword in hand, silver sword in hand, sorry. And he hits on the 25, 35, 38% chance to hit. Yeah, this isn't great. We can maybe kill, but I don't want to take the chance here. I was burnt with Valtar once, so I will head to the shop to pick up another potion. All right, now that we're all healed, we make our way back. We pick up the warp staff by accident. Yay, I guess. 
And we dodge. Okay, he did heal up all the way up because of all the turns he passed on it. So we do hit him again. He dodges. He heals up. Dodges again. We hit him. Okay, now we can kill him. Now's the time. Now's the play. All right, guys. Now's the play. Oh, he does hit us. All right, so that trip to the shop was actually very good. And then we get the Hooplon Guard, which we're really happy about because the Hooplon Guard will avoid us getting crits at all. So no more crits in this run for us, which is actually kind of taking out that X factor, I guess. Well, if you thought chapter 14 was hard, I present to you chapter 16. This map is literal hell. We run into the same problems Erica will run into. A lot of lance units or sword units she can't dodge as well as axe units, which is more customary to later on in the game in Sacred Stones. And the other big one, not a lot of places for her to dodge. There's a few pillars that are actually going to be essential to play around. It starts off quite easy as you have to take out these axe soldiers and the mercenaries and the mages, which, you know, most of them you'll naturally be able to dodge pretty well, but some of them will just have a higher hit rate. I'm thinking about the mercenaries here and that one fire mage which is a kind of like a 50 50 chance at this point but generally you'll do pretty good and then you're gonna straight just move on to the two knights in that hallway the one advantage you have with those two is you can only kill one of them knowing fully well that only that they don't move so they stay static the entire map so you can go through one of them and just ignore the other one avoiding you to use a lot of your items or to you know risk taking damage so there are two sages at the top who have bolting and pure so they will attack you from far away but not until a certain moment and I did not know about that. And right now you're going to see me do a crucial mistake as I get past the threshold of the night. So I think once you get past the threshold of the night, whether you go up or down on the map, you will activate literally everybody to come and attack you. So I'm doing strategically where I want to get placed here. I place myself down and everybody starts moving. I think it's only going to be the one night, but everybody starts moving towards you. The problem here is not that everybody starts surging forward. It's the two sages. You would think that range spell would be easy to dodge like the bolting we're going to see here, which is about 20 something percent chance. But the big one is the other one with the purge who's at 47 percent chance and right away you might understand that we're gonna run into a big problem with that guy so how are we gonna do this well we'll make our way down to this one pillar where we'll make our stand because this will also activate all the units to come rush you in the face they should be generally easy to dodge on that pillar only the sword master will maybe cause an issue but you'll make quick work of him and then all of these night reinforcements show up which they're not too bad but with the surge of enemy again at some point you're gonna get hit by something and you know some of them sport steel axes like this guy so they're, they're quite easy to get through but then there's that one silver lance guy with that 30 percent chance to hit and if you played fire emblem before you know that that 30 percent chance to hit is literally at least 70 right because that man's gonna hit you at the most inopportune time constantly the only item you're going to want on the map in terms of chess is a talisman that is situated at the top chest on the right top right hand side of the map this is really the only one you're looking for and if you play your card right then the thief will just straight up bring it to you he will just stand in front of you and there's a chance you can kill him and since the talisman is the last item he has taken well it becomes an easy kill and then you can get higher resistance which will be somewhat helpful beyond that point what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to get that guy to use all his purge and i'm gonna use pure water but as you're gonna see we're gonna dodge here but it's not gonna go as well as we thought here i'm i'm thinking maybe i can rush these guys right maybe i can like go in fast and and get a bunch of crits and everything and the game doesn't agree with me as well as you'll see here this 37 percent axe guy hits me so it's game over so i do another attempt i get back to these damn great knights get hit by 31 percent chance because of course i do i finally managed to get rid of all of these guys and then i have a new strategy get the bolting guy out of boltings first because he has a lower chance of hitting you right he does but doesn't matter so here i'm just gonna show you guys a quick compilation of me just dying here's one you know silver lance great next silver lance again just very great oh there's a new one. Oh, it's a 15 percent chance flux you know you know gotta get all sorts of deaths in here oh here we try a new strategy it's the silver sword here had a good chance of hitting us to be fair we do even manage to make it to horse in here so we have a chance 
And even in that scenario, we don't, we have a chance of dying. So we're going to wait it out. We get hit by the 60% chance and we miss one of our 60. Okay, here we need really good luck. We have to dodge 60% and hit twice. Let's cross our fingers and... God. That's rough. All right. You're going to have to do it again. Something you're not seeing as much is all my previous attempts where I get hit by something too early on and I have to reset because I have to use an elixir too early, which is causing me a lot of issues. The elixir problem is causing me a lot of issues because often I will run out even before I get to the line of heroes, which will most likely than not hit you. Here I find a new strategy where I can somewhat get rid of the purge, hopefully once in a while. The bolt thing's already gone because I've installed myself on the pillars at the bottom there and kind of dodged them all out quickly enough the purge i'm getting lucky enough but i bring one of the knights over to the right side because they will not attack you unless you are in range so here what i'm trying to do is bring in one at a time and get lucky with a killing edge which i do here and then what i'm going to try to do is get each of the heroes one at a time down silver axe first we do dodge we get a lucky crit we can then hinge out the kill all right then the two others are going to be problematic because they have silver swords so we're going to have to take them one at a time and hopefully the luck goes our way here all right here here it comes oh we dodge 61 percent chance and grab a very nice crit all right so we'll finish this guy off all right next one next one let's hopefully hopefully this works we got one more waited out with the killing edge can we can we recreate some magic here Ooh, he hits us though Ooh, he hits us but we can go stand on the pillar and use our last elixir can we get lucky Oh, he hits up with a 41% chance. No, this is really, really, really bad. Oh, can we? We need a crit. What we need here is a crit. We enemy phase. We dodge. We hit again. We need a crit. But I do remember that I have a silver sword in my supply that I can pick up to one shot this man because the silver sword will do enough damage so luckily we picked those up earlier and yes let's hopefully we don't miss the 91 percent chance all right so before we get orson started i want to mention something that i decided to change in the rules here at this point in the run because i had been on this map for about two hours at this point of two hours of real life time i allow myself a mulligan rule for the supply convoy what i mean by that is for one map per each of these runs that i'm going to try to do because i'm going to try to do other runs on other characters i am allowed to for one map to use supply convoy to bring out one extra healing item once per run only because if i have to rely on extra luck here like in these maps it can become a little tedious so as you'll be able to see here my health is like at 19 i need to beat orson I've gotten really lucky so far. I'm not expecting the luck to keep going my way. So I do use the elixir right here. I use my mulligan there. I know it might get go against the spirit of the run a little bit, but you know, I want to make sure that this stays consistent. So we enemy phase. Orson attacks us. We dodge. We get the and we get the crit. Uh, all of that. And you know what? The luck stayed on our side. It, it did end up mattering. You see me kind of sitting there a little stunned. And I'm like, did this just happen? It did. And we finally get to Erica's promotion. Holy crap. Finally, we get something good happening. Because at the end of this map, you get the Lunar Brace, which allows you to promote Erica. And you get some pretty good up in stats here. So as Chapter 17 runs in the back here, because honestly, Chapter 17 is back to easy because of Erica's promotion, really. I'll talk a little bit about the up she gets in her stats. She gets plus four at HP, plus two in strength, plus two in skill, plus one in speed, plus three in defense, plus five in resistance, and plus two in constitution. So the big ones here are really the defensive side of things she'll be able to tank a little bit better because she gets really average stuff in the rest but it does make her a little bit better because you know you get that threshold of 20 more levels to level up and erica just starts running through the game at this point so really for chapter 17 as i said easy you find a terrain of some kind the mountains is the best you stand on it you dodge everything and then the moment you have an opening you go murder leon all right now we get to chapter 18 this map should be easy right but some veterans of this game might realize that I'm going into this with a huge problem. We're facing something here that's quite problematic. As you can see right now on the screen, there are two units Erica cannot reach. And one of the problems is that we don't have a ranged weapon on Erica. The only ranged swords that are available in the game are the light brand and the rune sword, which now I'm thinking, did I miss one? Did I forget one in the chest somewhere? I was like scratching my head here. Well, no. The first rune sword or light brand of the game are available at chapter 19 and beyond. But what does that mean for the run? Well, technically... That'd mean it'd be over. 
technically it it means that we'd have to stop it right here because naturally throughout the game there's no way you can get a ranged weapon for erica so erica is soft locked here she can't continue there's just two enemies in the way well i might have a solution and it would include the tower of valny or the ruin we technically have the no grinding rule though technically we're not allowed to grind but we've clearly hit a roadblock in the run and if i'd known ahead of time i could have managed to grab one rune sword before erica's class up therefore i wouldn't have really grinded for anything hence i would have still avoided the girt no grinding rule and honestly this is really the only way to proceed but technically the run would be ending here but because i want to see it through to the end so i decide let's go back and let's go grab ourselves a rune sword but wait up there buddy i run into yet another problem i saved during the battle preparation phase to save myself some time in case i needed to reset the map a couple of times well in sacred stones unlike an awakening there's no way to go back once you're in the battle preparation state you're stuck there so once again i managed to soft lock myself the only way to go back is if i reset entirely and start the run over again but honestly at this point i'm not feeling like resetting at all i'm a little annoyed at this point when i realized the mistake i've made and then i realized there's a way that we could continue this but it's not a legit way we'd have to hack in the weapon itself using game shark codes it annoys me to have to do that but at the point that i'm at i decided to do it because whether we have a no grinding no glitch no hack rule i think that at this point we had a legit strategy to make it to the end that could have worked but we soft locked ourselves by accident and knowing this fact in the future i will be able to think about it ahead of time i think it's okay in this one instance if you disagree let me know in the comments i apologize if it kind of breaks the spirit of the run but i decided to give my Myself, the rune sword i do give myself a little limitation on it i'm only allowed to use it to kill these two enemies once we have it though the map is literally a cakewalk none of these enemies will cause issues be careful to not kill yourself on the magma floors and that's about it all right after this craziness let's move on to chapter 19 which is a nice change of pace and by that i mean you it's so easy it's like chapter 13 survive maps are so goddamn easy on those solo runs because there's always a way for you to just stand there and wait so what i do is i pick up the king i stand on the throne because if he dies after reset and i just wait so once you clear the roston map you get access to a shop that is filled with really good sword so something i end up doing is i fill my inventory up with silver swords with killing edge and all that good stuff to just be ready for the ch final chapters and unbeknownst to me chapter 20 darkling woods is actually a hellscape of reinforcement unit it's not even funny that's how it looked around me for a little bit there i'm just surrounded it's crazy it's insane but it's actually very easy because of all the woods you just stand erica on there and you will dodge most things you won't need to use more than one set of potion most likely and you'll kill everything using your killing edge or steel swords or whatever sword you decide to pick there it's gonna be a long one it took me about an hour to complete just because i had to move literally square by square which is not fun so i won't break anything down except for maybe the boss and nothing is really of note it's a very easy chapter but i'll take a minute to look at our level 20 erica stats because that's actually kind of interesting so erica got promoted to level 20 again great lord erica at level 20 we have a really good hp line with 55 we're technically two above where we should be considering we had an angelic robe we managed to cap out our strength which is awesome but then again we should be at 21 but we did use two energy rings we max out our skill obviously so we're on average there we're actually under the average for speed so we're at 29 and we should be at 30 so the speed at 29 is kind of unique especially considering that at level one great lord we were 21 speed so we really just needed nine level ups in speed with technically 75 percent growth rate because remember i used the metastome so it's shocking to me that in all those levels in 20 levels we only managed eight speed very odd but it's okay we max out the luck we get over with the luck we did use a goddess icon but we're still over the luck our defense is where it should be because we did use that dragon shield remember and our res is technically too above what it should be because we did use that talisman so our erica is looking average i'd even go beyond and say that she's under average because when you consider all the items we had access to it's normal that most of our stats are where they are and we should have our speed at 30 but we 
don't. So she's at the very best just an average Erica, considering that we had to give her a couple of items to get her there. And again, Darkling Wood, not hard, so we'll just straight up move on to the last chapter of the game. All right, so here we are, final chapter, the Sacred Stones. So we end up going straight into it. We need to force deploy Ephraim, unfortunately, but this map has a couple, has two ways really to approach it, either from the right or the left at the start. And then there's three paths. There's a right path up top, left path up top, and a middle path down, you know, the middle. It's not a hard map to approach, but I decided to take the right-hand side simply because there's the Gorgon there, but because there's an angelic robe in the chest and I kind of want it. I'm five away from maxing out my HP as Erica, so that angelic robe will get us over the top and might provide a little bit of survivability. So the monsters will surge on our right, all the skeletons, but they're easy kill with the killing edge we have. They're going to be very easy to start running through. So yeah, they shouldn't be an issue, but there is an issue a little bit down the line. An issue I end up accidentally facing because I get too far up and I get in the range of attack of this dragon, which is about 50% chance to hit me. And if you didn't notice, 31 damage. So even if I get the angelic robe, this guy will two shot me if he hits me. So it does require a little bit of luck. So can we get that luck? All right, let's try with Sigland, which is the best sword in the game. We're gonna be able to hit him twice but he still has a chance to hit us. So we gotta be careful here. All right, get it, Erica. Oh no, we get it. Oh God, if he hits us again, we're cooked. This one's gonna be easy, but let's hope. Cross our fingers, everybody. Can we do it? Can we? Oh, thank God. And now we're gonna be able to come up and clean up, baby. Damn. That's why this map is challenging quote unquote, because it's not it's the only challenging part is this one dragon which is 100 percent based on luck and as i said earlier the angelic robe situated in the chest down there will get you to 60 hp so if you get maybe an erico for a little bit better defense you might be able to just survive that that might be like a, a range thing where if you get maybe two more defense it does 29 instead and you're looking good so there is a possibility if you get a like slightly above average erica in the defensive portion that this guy isn't really a problem but for me it was dependent on luck that's the big thing about this map so you'll see that i take the right hand side path with the spider because they can't really hit me and the goal of this map is to just kill the boss and then you can move on so you got to get there as quickly as possible these spiders really aren't a problem the gorgons shouldn't really be a problem they don't really have a good hit rate like 13 percent we should dodge mode these even that 20 percent it shouldn't be a problem Oh, okay. Well, you know, I guess I guess at some point we gotta get hit by something. So we head straight for Leon. So as you can see with the Adalma, I it actually does 29 damage. So if I would be full HP, I'd be able to survive two hits from him. But at this point, I have no more potion. And I go for some reason, I go for the Sigilind, which I don't know why I do that. Maybe it would provide me more avoid, maybe more crit. And I do get hit. Oh no, okay. So hopefully we survive here. That was kind of a bad call on my end. Dodge the spider, okay. You know, keep crossing your fingers and Leon attack. Okay, dodge this. Oh, there's no shot. We dodge this. There's... Oh, Eric. Oh, Eric, oh, with the crit. <laughs> oh, my God. That was some level of luck right there. And now, the second part of this whole thing. You got to fight the Demon King here. We got to fight the Demon King. So we move Ephraim out of the way, of course. And let's go check out what we can do to him. All right, Siglid. That's 25 damage. That's... Good, but oh no, he does 31 damage. So I can only get hit once by him. All right, let's wait it out. Let's go enemy phase, which was a mistake because he just spawned a bunch of people here, which you, which you don't want. So I, I end up trying to attack him here and we should hit him. That should be fine. Come on, dodge, dodge, dodge. No, okay. We still have a chance. This is not over. We still have a chance. Okay, dodge, 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 dodge. Oh, Erica, you absolute unit. All right, kill that zombie. Can we move on? Can we? Oh my God, we're so close. I don't think we have an elixir on us. Maybe we do actually. Oh, he attacks Ephraim. He's not too far enough out of the way. Oh no. It's the dragon reinforcement that showed up. Ah. Uh... We would have had a chance to first try it if we would have been smart and not enemy phased. So as you can see here, there's 
couple of places where you can die. Unfortunately, I'd like to tell you that fighting the Demon King isn't luck based at all. It's all like all skill based and everything. But but I'd be lying. I'd be I would be lying. So this map has a couple of units, like three, that require a level of luck that maybe other maps don't require. All right, I'll skip on right ahead to Leon because we kind of know what happens here. You can see me hover the Sigliad because it does more damage, but ultimately I decide to go, to go with the Adolma because, you know, I can take two hits there and just increasing my chance of survivability on him will make him a little bit more consistent. So I go with that. You know, I hope for a crit. We don't get it. We do dodge a 61% though, and we hit him twice. That is great. Let's end that turn, and hopefully Leon helps us out. You know, spider keeps attacking. Uh, doesn't do anything. We murder the spider. And I think we only have one use of our Adolma there, though, to be fair. We do get hit, unfortunately. We hit once, and then it breaks. So now we got to survive the other onslaught of attack, which shouldn't be too bad. It's just Gorgons. They should miss, right? They should, they sh they should miss. But, you know, they, they don't. So let's let's hope that you, you better fucking miss. Okay. Uh, you too? That, we, okay. And, oh my god. Okay, that stone should be extremely fine, right? Oh my god, they're so close. They're so... Oh, dear lord, thank you. Thank you. All right. Leon, can you please be nice and, and just... Oh, god. 34% chance to hit. Oh, I had an elixir. Okay, I used that. That was smart. That was smart to use an elixir. Let him kill himself on you. All right, so that should be fine, right? We do get hit, but that's okay. We did get another next two hits, and Leon falls. And Demon King, here I come. Is this the attempt where this works? I don't know. <laughs> Push back Ephraim again because you don't want him to die. Let's just walk up to him, and you, you, there's nothing fancy about this. You just have to walk up to this man's and hit him right in the face. I'm looking for a strategy here. You can see me be like, oh, maybe if I do this. No, no. You just walk up to this man's, and you slash him in the face with your sword. Even though he has a very strong attack. Nightmare is insane because it puts everybody asleep. Hopefully he doesn't use it because that would be pretty bad. But you, you know, let's let's walk up. Siglid, best shot, 26 damage. He has 40% chance to hit. Please dodge, please dodge. Oh god, thank you, Erica. Okay, he's at 68% chance, uh, 68 HP. Very nice, but not, not nice enough. And we can't kill him. We need to dodge once more. I just need one more dodge from you, Erica. Oh my god, she gets it. Oh lord. Okay, so he's gonna attack from far away. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, she gets... She, I think we won. I think this is it. Kill that stupid zombie. I don't care. <laughs> kill them all. No. I don't, give me my turn. Skip to my turn, please. No, I, I don't care. You can hit me. Have your fun. Oh god, he from... Oh no, we almost lost. Can you guys believe that Ephraim could have costed us this one here? He was down to 8 HP right there. That's insane. All right, Demon King, it's you and me. How about you catch these hands, boy? We did it. Let's go. And now we have the epilogue of the game rolling in front of our eyes right here. Let's look at the total turns we accumulated. So this run lasted, as you can see here, 855 turn totals. And the in-game playtime I had for completion was 15 hours and 45 minutes. The reason I'm giving you guys these benchmark numbers is because I will be calculating each run with each character, how long it takes, how many turns and the time, and I will try to rank them to see who did a better job. So Erica's our starting point with 855 turns and 15 hours and 45 minutes of gameplay. Honestly, this run was challenging at times. It was easy at times, but I had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed too. Let me know if you wanna see more of these in the comment section below and if you do which character would you like to see me try or which also other fire emblem game you'd like to see me try but other than that thank you all for watching this far in the video i know this was a long one hopefully you guys enjoyed leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more fire emblem content of all types and yeah that's about it for me i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye